All right, now I have a quick sketch worked out on the canvas here just to give me an idea of where I wanna go with this. We'll talk about this in just a second. Let's go over to the palette and I'll show you what I have here. I have some acrylic paint, Liquitex soft body. We have titanium white, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and this one is a golden fluid acrylic. We have carbon black. I just prefer a thicker paint when it comes to uh, such colors as white and then adding um, really powerful or strong colors such as black or red. Uh, you only need just a dab of it, so the, the fluid acrylics work, work well for that. Okay, and now the brush that I'm going to start with, probably going to start probably going to start with a simple brush. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the flat brush. This is just a one inch flat brush. And I'm going to get some water, dip it in water, kind of spread that around. Now the majority of this painting is going to be blue. But we don't want to add a lot of blue, just a hint. So what I'm doing now is I'm just getting water, mixing it into my brush and into the paint. Okay. And I'm going to pick up a small amount, just a dab of cerulean blue. Also a small amount of black. That might be too much black. We'll try this for right now, just see where this takes us. Okay, so what I have here on the canvas is, well, it's going to be a forest scene in the winter. I would like to have um, maybe a source of light coming through the, the pine boughs through here and a few spots of light hitting the snow covered ground down here, maybe a, a creek, some trees. So this is just kind of a blueprint, just gonna help me along the way. I'm gonna see how this goes. I can already tell that that might be slightly too dark. Also might be too gray. Okay, we're just gonna go back. We're gonna go ahead and just use all this paint. You really don't need a lot of color. So I just add a lot of white to that, some blue. This gives me a, a base to work with anyhow. So this is going to be more of a blocking in stage. Fairly simple, easy to do, really easy to do. Now I'm gonna add more cerulean blue and a touch of cobalt blue. Just as I get a bit further away. Very simple step. So you can see now we've got sort of a lighter area, less blue, and then the blue starts to come in as we move away from the light source. So I'm just grabbing some more blue. Go ahead, and just using all this paint for right now. A lot of paint going on. Just a nice, Smooth blend. See how easy that is to blend? Acrylic paint gets such a bad rap. But if you use the right paint, learn how to work with it in the conditions that you work in. Temperature can affect it. Moisture in the air can affect it. But at any rate, once you kind of figure out what works for you, you can get a nice smooth blend. See how nice that blend is? Just perfect. So we've got sort of a light source coming together right here. 
little more water on my brush. Some blue. And I'm just going ahead and fill in some of the parts down here. Don't need to get ahead of myself yet though. So what I'm gonna do is just let this dry and then the next layer will go over the top. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more paint as well, but I'm gonna let this dry for just a few minutes and then I'll continue the next step. So the next part of this is to start adding some tree detail. And what I wanna do is basically keep everything on the blue scale, but add more gray, bring it closer to the gray scale and darken it slightly. And that'll start to stand out against the background. And then as we build it up, we'll get even darker and darker towards the foreground. And I think it's gonna create a nice uh, atmospheric look. So I'm gonna take some white again. We'll go right next to this. We'll kind of use this as reference. I'm gonna mix some blue. and some black. Okay, so I'm just testing this out. I'm mixing this color and then I'm just kind of testing it against the color that I previously had for the background. So that's going to be about right. I'm just adding more blue to that. Okay, I'm going to try that. We'll start over to the side. I think that'll be fairly close. And so what I'm doing is just thinking about the outline of these pine boughs, these tree branches, really simple. You see how we can just kind of use the shape of the brush and instantly we kind of have the appearance of a tree right here. So that's all I'm kind of looking for right now. I'm going to add some white and blue to this. Every time we add white, we decrease how much blue is in the mixture, so we want to add some more if we add white. <clears throat> now, it's important to not get too stressed in this stage because things can always be changed this is a very, very stress-free type of painting because we're using the same color scale. We're not going from blue to oranges or trying to layer multiple colors together, which can be difficult to change. So when we're using all blue, we can really just paint right over the top. It's very simple to correct. So by keeping it all uh, in a blue scale makes it very easy. So I'm just trying to imagine some trees being out here.
And a lot of this texture will end up being just very random. A lot of it doesn't have to make sense at this point. It'll all kind of fade away uh, once all of this is working together. It'll look all right, even though if it if it's really nothing to begin with. So we can just layer on this this color, just kind of put it everywhere. Then I can grab this darker color that I had. And so what I'm going to do is continue to add trees just like this. And as I get closer and closer to the foreground, and I may switch to a smaller brush if I want to just control this a little more, but as I move closer to the foreground, I'm just going to take more black, I'm going to take more blue, and I'm never going to have a true black in this, but it, I'm just going to take more black and blue. And just to give you a, an idea of what this will be, I'll just continue to add some darker trees just like that. Now you can see we're starting to have these different layers. We've got a light layer, slightly darker, slightly darker, slightly darker. We're going to have some in between, we might even have a fourth or fifth layer. And uh, as I keep to uh, continuing to work on the trees, I'll bring it back as we get kind of into the transition area, as we work down towards the foreground, down towards the uh, earth itself. And uh, we'll talk about that when we get to that step. Okay, so you're probably wondering what's going on at this point. I'm completely erasing that background portion way in the back, and you're gonna see me start over again on those trees. Now I'm virtually going to repaint the exact same scene in the background, but what happened was I decided I wasn't really happy with the texture of the trees that I was putting in, the texture of those pine boughs and those individual branches. And so this is the beauty of acrylic paint. This is why I love using acrylics is that once it's dry, I can completely repaint that, start over, restart, and you're going to see me go at this a little more carefully just so that I make sure that I get the texture right and um, I'm basically going to get right back to where I had left off, but just a little bit tighter and a little more accurate or true to what I wanted to depict.
Okay, so finally, I am happy with the blueprint that I have for the background. That was a, a bit of an interesting way to get here uh, with repainting this area, but uh, there was just something off about it. So I'm gonna move on before I add more detail, and I will to the trees up above, I'm going to move on to uh, the foreground area and just sort of do the same thing, get that in place. And what I'm gonna do, I've got a lot of paint on the palette here, but what I'm gonna do is start with some white, and a lot of this is dried. So I can go right over the top. I'm gonna to take a small amount of each of these colors of blue. So I don't want that to be pure white. I think I want more cerulean blue than the cobalt blue. So I'm going to put a nice coat over this whole area, which will be snow. And of course, in the middle here, I want to have some sort of creek. Okay. So now as I get this coat of paint down, I want to cover some of that up with a darker blue. And I've got, this is just some darker black over here. So this will just darken the mixture. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into extreme detail yet with the shadows on the snow. So everything's gonna be blended sort of uh, in a general way, very broad blending. And I'll go back and refine But the first things first, I just want to get this color down. Okay, now I'm going to go back and I'm just going to grab some white. And I'm going to start to define some of these highlights that I talked about, some of the shading in the snow. And I'm gonna to need to get some more white paint. Can burn through that pretty quickly. And all I'm doing is taking my brush and just dipping the brush in the white paint. And because this is still fairly wet, this is going to blend in to what I have already very nicely. And I'm going to drag some of these down. So I want the snow to appear to drop off towards the creek. And so I'm going to start kind of flat up top and then drop it off. Flat up top, drop it off.
Okay, now I'm going to take some black and I'm going to get a lot of cobalt blue. I want to start to lay in the shadow underneath these banks of snow where this creek will be. And then I'm going to pull it up into the snow, same way I pulled those highlights down. Now I'm going to pull the shadows upward. And some of this might be covered up along the way. Again, this is just getting me started. I want to add quite a bit of detail into this as a whole. So I'm really just trying to work out the kinks at this point. This is one of the struggles of working from imagination. It never is an easy process. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. But I think I'm going to be happy with how it's coming together, so I'm just going to keep going. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in this whole area in between with this darker tone. That'll give me a starting point. Okay. Now, again, I think I might go back to a smaller brush. So this is just a really frayed, uh, very well used. In fact, this one's not quite as frayed. We'll go with this one. Well used filbert brush. And I'm going to just grab my white paint. And I'm hoping that this is going to be still a little bit wet. And it will be. I'm going to continue to add some more highlights. Very thick paint. So what's going to be neat about this, and now I'm going to kind of flatten out the brush and just sort of pat on this color. What's going to be neat about this painting is I want there to be more texture. Sometimes it's not appropriate in the style that I'm working in, but I really think it'd be cool. And sometimes it's just nice to learn more about different ways of painting. So this painting is going to have a lot of texture. And I'm going to use that texture. my advantage, make it appear as though the snow actually has texture in it. So it's going to automatically create uh, different little features for us. I'll take a little bit of that cerulean blue. There we go. So this is going to tone it down. So now we kind of have a second level of highlights going on. I'll just mix that blue into the white. Make sure it's nice and thick and just pick up that thick paint. Big glob. And I'm just going to let that glob just drag around. Okay, now I can work on this further later in the process, even with oils, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and let everything in this painting dry. I'm going to get a 
give it a good half hour, maybe more. We'll just see how it goes, and then uh, I'll come back. Now this is virtually a underpainting, which I'll now use to to branch off from, and I'll begin to refine. I'll add a lot more details. I want to clean up uh, certain areas, especially the edges of uh, some of the transition areas between the creek and the banks. Um, just a lot of things need to be cleaned up overall. So I'm going to show you and just get into a little bit of that. And the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to take this larger flat brush again. And I want to finalize some things, uh, especially the prominent features in this painting, which would be the big tree, a couple of these big trees here. I'm going to mix the color, that dark color of the tree. See if I've got it here. Ah, that's about right. Now I want to I want to finalize this tree. And I think I want it to be a little bit closer to the viewer. Just create more of an interesting composition. So we're going to have some roots kind of coming off. Yeah, somewhere about like that. And I'm going to take that dark black color that I still have. And I'll begin to add more layers of shadows down through here. And this is just because I have it on my brush right now anyways. A little bit darker. A little more blue. Now as I begin to add the darker tones to an area like the creek through here, all of a sudden this dark tone that we already have laid down becomes lighter. And as that becomes lighter, all of a sudden it starts to make sense a little bit. It starts to actually look like it might be the right tone versus before it might have appeared to be too dark. So I'm just kind of using that paintbrush to just kind of just feather it off into the snow and that creates some random textures. And those random textures look pretty cool. Looks like the snow is just kind of melting right off those banks. I want that to be dark down low here. Look at that. Perfect. So by adding those darker tones, all of a sudden we have just more of an interesting composition. Now, as I add those darker tones to areas like the water, I might want to think about doing the same to the areas in the snow. So let's see here if I can find a brush that I will like. I think I'll start with this. It's kind of a filbert brush. It's a nice, more of a rounder brush. And I'm going to try to just pick up some darker tones in the in the snow. Now, like I said, I believe I said this earlier, I can switch to oil. And that will really help me blend this out. But I just want to see how far I can get with the acrylics. So I'll keep trying to push the boundaries of the acrylics. Now this is just adding some slightly darker tones.
That was just some shadows. Sort of a third layer of shadows. We've got the highlights, we've got the tone of the snow through here, and then we've got these dark shadows. Maybe this is kind of in between. It's just going to create more depth in the snow. And this just depends on your particular intentions with the painting. I always, as you know, like to take things pretty far in terms of detail. So I'll just continue to work on various things like this. Now you want to be careful with these darker tones. You don't want to bring them too far back into the background because then you start to lose that atmospheric look. We want things to appear to get lighter as they get further into the background itself. But I also want to work on the trees. I want to work on the tree branches. And this is going to be a, a pretty tedious portion to start to add little pine boughs, things like that. And this might be a little confusing going over the top of the colors I already have on here. But I'm kind of using those colors underneath where I'm mixing just to kind of compare. How is this going to stand out against this color down here, which is, I know, the color that I have uh, in the background. I'm going to start to look for... I'll probably go a little bit darker. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do, before I get too far in the tree detail, I'm going to make sure that what I have in the foreground is, is what I want. And so what I mean by that is I want to have all of the, the branches, the areas up front here as finished as I can. So it's just going to be a long and interesting process. And you'll see it progress as I add these little details in the trees. I'm just giving the indication of maybe another tree branch that's a little bit darker than this tree back here. So this is kind of in between this tree and that tree. It's just adding another layer, another tree branch coming down. Gives you the idea of a tree maybe standing back just off to the right here. So it's little things like that that I like to, to pick at, I like to work on. I'm keeping everything sort of monotone, just one color right now. And I might add some snow on tops of these branches. And these branches through here could be cleaned up a little better. It doesn't necessarily make a perfect tree branch at this point. And so I'll have to just redefine these branches, add a little bit more, just get a little more focused with some of the tips of these branches. I want them to look like pine boughs. I also don't want them to all be the same type of pine tree. So I want to change up the, the, the types of these branches, the style of these branches from tree to tree. So some branches will be kind of going up as in this big tree here. Uh, some of these other trees might be going down more, as you can see, in some of the boughs on this tree back here. And so I'm just going to continue to refine, poke, poke, poke. And I'm also going to add just some of this darker tone. Uh, again, not, not too dark. Might be just, yeah, somewhere in between there. And just clean up these edges. Just keep feathering it, feathering it, working it, working it. And there's another edge I could clean up just right through here. It's not going to be any, any more complicated than this. It's just a lot of time involved. 
and a lot of work. And I may work on this for two, three, four hours. Just depends. I really don't know. And don't be afraid to let the texture of the canvas show through. Sometimes that, may, sometimes that makes it interesting. Even just taking some lighter, some lighter tones and adding it to the river. Maybe kind of make the, the indication of a reflection shining from above down onto the river. Pretty easy, just like that. There's some subtle tones. This is also helping me clean up some of the areas. Maybe I can see through the canvas a little bit. Some spots, I want to make sure I cover that with paint. So just scrubbing on this paint. It's not watered down too much, but it has enough moisture content just to keep it moving. And I'll also be taking some of the same blue color that I have in the snow. And I'll probably start to add it to the trees because I want to start highlighting the trees. And so I'm just tapping it on to this dark area very lightly. So I've got a nice soft round brush. You could use this scrumbler brush that I like a lot. Any brush that has some nice soft edges. Just adding sort of the appearance of some snow on the trees. Could use a sponge, that might work pretty well. Texture of the canvas works fairly well also. So it's all fairly simple, nothing too complicated. You just got to know how the canvas is going to work in relation to the brush. And then just let the chips fall. Kind of just fading that tree into the snow, sort of seed it right into the snow. And I'll come back, that's a start. I'll come back and continue to work on that a little bit more, but that gives us a start anyways. And then I'll also take probably a smaller brush towards the end. I just have some white on my liner brush here, and I'll probably just start adding, tapping some snow detail on top of the tree boughs. I probably won't put too much snow detail in way in the background. Probably leave it closer to the foreground where the trees get darker. I just don't want a lot of detail way back in there just to distract. I want to keep the distractions up close. So I'll just probably take a liner brush, adding some small little details like some snow is sitting on tops of these branches. And slowly but surely, I think you'll see everything starting to take shape. So I'm going to continue to work on this, and then I'll slow it down, and uh, we'll talk about a next step, see where I might want to take this.
Well, hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to ask any questions and be sure to give me feedback if you have any. I know that these instructional videos aren't always perfect in the sense that I do make changes, especially in the sped up portion, um, things that are a little bit unplanned because uh, first and foremost, I am an artist and I have to create and um, sometimes it always doesn't always mash well with making the videos here. So please be sure to give me feedback if you have any. Leave that in the discussion below. I'll try to continue to share everything that I learn along the way in my journey as an artist. So again, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to check out my free print giveaway as well as my eBay auctions and website. All of those links are in the description below. I auction off all the paintings I do here on the videos through my eBay. Again, thank you. See you next time.